Hello, uh, Western Civ 105. Uh, welcome to week two. And um, I hope that you all had a great uh, time. Most of the work that I'm getting is looking great. I will confess I'm a little puzzled still why so many of you have um, not turned in work or turning in late uh, work for the notes and the discussions and you're not explaining yourselves uh, why you've, you've turned it in so late because it says clearly on the assignment due Thursday. Now what I just realized when I um, looked at uh, uh, the student view that there's um, an app that, which I don't see that talks about due dates um, that I can log in and I don't use that. I simply write it as the first thing. That, it's the first thing that I mentioned in the assignment instructions. So I assumed that that would be very clear to see right there. Now the other thing that was brought to my attention is that I had this ambiguous um, 12, it said, said thir do Thursday by 12 a.m. and I meant 11.59 meaning by midnight on, on Thursday is what I meant to say. That, that was a little confusing. But that would have actually implied it had been due Wednesday earlier. So it doesn't really explain why so many of you have not turned in work or are turning it in this late. So please let's, let's um, get on board with that. Um, if you do have a hard time getting something done on time, then I want you to contact me. You can't just turn in late work and presume that it's... That it's fine to do that. Um, but I realize this week, it's it's the first week, there's a lot of confusion over little things, so we're not going to sweat it too much, but I just want to make sure we get this very clear right off the bat. Now, once in a while, I will make uh, assignments due uh, on Sunday. I'll give you more time, and that will be also stated in the assignment instruction. In my other class, for different sets of reasons, I allowed uh, the video notes to be uh, um, for Sunday while ours was due Thursday. Keep in mind, if you have both of my classes, that also might confuse you. I myself sometimes kind of mix up my two classes when I'm teaching them at the same time. Um, and so that can happen. So um, these are just things to keep in mind. I'm sure we're all going to get this worked out uh, just fine. And so uh, just to say, I think... Um, that uh, the majority of you are getting the, the gist of my, my information. Sorry, let me turn off my, uh, <laughs> my phone. Okay. Um, and uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah. So just keep in mind, because I'm in Thailand, there's like a was it 12 or 14 hour difference. I think it's 14. But um, often, like right now, it, it looks to me that it's 11.55 p.m. Uh, where you're at. It's 2.55 uh, p.m. in the future, <laughs> the next day here in Thailand. So often when you're getting up, I'm sl slowly heading into the evening, night, going to bed, and then vice versa. So just keep that in mind if you have any questions and you have some urgency to them. Um, send me a message any time of the day, but just keep in mind that my response may come followed like me getting, I might be in, in asleep as well and so on. Um, in terms of the information, here again, we're covering absolutism. These are the kind of things that maybe at times, if you're not a history nerd, not a history buff, can be a little bit boring. If you're not thinking about or conceptualizing the significance of how this affects your life, and you know how our society developed we don't have a king now the uk and many european nations still have monarchies but they have very little political power i'm living right now in thailand where there is a king and um this is rama uh 10 i believe the 10th king from the chakri dynasty and in about the 30s um, there was a sort of a coup slash revolution in which the king was an absolute monarch as well. Here, we're talking in the 20th century, and then it, this was turned into a constitutional monarchy like many European nations in the 30s. 
And there was, and there's no doubt that many of the uh, nationalist uh, leaders within the military and outside the military studied the history of European uh, uh, kings and what took place in the West as a way to try to maybe visualize a, um, a different way of doing things here. And in fact, in Thailand, uh, you really see um, a, a very, um, I want to say odd blend, a blend of ancient Indian and uh, Far East Asian uh, traditions um, mixed with Western traditions and ideas that um, people here that became educated were able to incorporate into their society here. And so um, I just want to remind you that the development of Western civilization has its ripple effects all the way over here. And this history is important. Okay. And so that's all I'm going to say about this for now. If you have any questions, please uh, contact me and let me know. Um, and um, later on, maybe I'll do more of a discussion about the relevance of the king here. Um, by the way, you have to respect the king. It's, there's very hard laws, uh, uh, harsh or very strict um, codes of ethics and regards to respecting the king here still. So that's interesting as an American to, to experience that. Anyways, um, if I get a chance later on, I might post something kind of showing you something about that. Um, just because we're dealing with the topic of absolute monarchs. But uh, I'll end up here and have a good week. We'll be in touch.